Griddles are great. Cast iron is a fabulous material. Put the two together and you've got a wonderful way to cook. Let's see if we can make it even better. Be right back. Hello, Cast Iron Warriors. I'm Mr. Spork, and these are Mr. Spork's Hands. If you're like me, you watch a lot of cooking videos, a lot of street food videos, a lot of diner kitchen videos when you can find them, and you know how useful a flat top is. Flat top is the term that they apply to, in effect, commercial griddles, really smooth, uh, usually stainless steel griddles. And while those are fabulous, and I'd love to have one in the kitchen, my kitchen's not big enough and I don't have a few thousand dollars to spend on one. This is an attempt to try to take one of these uh, generic, simple cast iron griddles and polish it down into smooth to see how it works, see if it can get to that smooth finish, and quite frankly, to see if it's worth doing. I'm gonna do some before and after cooking. Uh, this is just a generic, uh, literally $23 cast iron griddle. It's no particular brand name. Cast iron you really don't need to spend a lot of money on. I know there's a lot of designer uh, name brands of cast iron everything out these days. And cast iron is a really easy, predictable manufacturing process. It's been around for thousands of years. Uh, they've been doing it in China forever and a day. But what's changed over time, back in the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, they did a lot better job of polishing these at the factory. You can see this is literally just almost straight out of the package. I've only cooked a couple things on it. But it's got kind of this, uh, what people call the orange peel texture. It's not super, super smooth. It's not glass smooth. Um, and you don't really need that for a lot of things. I've done a couple uh, tortillas on this, and that's about it. But I want to see if I can get it down to a super smooth finish using one of these. This is a grinding wheel. I believe officially it's made for grinding down auto body metal, but uh, I've seen some folks use this to grind out cast iron pans, and I want to see if I can do it on the griddle and then see if that really does help. So don't spend a lot of money on these. Do get yourself one of these, about five bucks at the home center. And more importantly, don't do this inside. I'm going to go outside when I go to grind it and show you the guys the stages, but you're going to be actually making metal dust. You don't want that in your house. You want to wear a respirator, put those COVID masks to good use, and get yourself outside when you're grinding this. I'm going to do it out in the snow, so don't expect a lot of footage out there. I'll be right back to show you some tests before. I just want to do a little cooking test before I grind this thing down so you can see how it performs pretty much straight out of the box. I'm going to do something a little bit odd. I'm going to take my butter, I'm just going to put it on one half side. Let's see if I can bridge that gap. So we've got butter on the left side and nothing but raw cast iron on the right side. Let's see how that performs. Since I'm going to eat this egg, I'm going to put a little bit of pepper on there. The beauty, of course, with cast iron is that you can use just about any kind of utensil you want. You're not going to hurt it. This is um, one of the advantages, the main advantages, I think, of cast iron. All right, so let's just see what we're doing. Over here on the buttered side, we're not getting much sticking at all. Over here on the untreated side, it's certainly sticking more, but it's not too bad. It's not terrible, to be honest with you. One of the main things when you're cooking eggs in cast iron is leave them alone for a while. They will pretty much release on their own. Or we're getting just a little bit of sticking. Let's try to go straight under. See, so yeah, we got a little bit of sticking there. Flipping it over. So yeah, maybe we can improve that with a little bit of grinding. Let's find out. So I'm making some progress out here. This is only about five minutes worth of grinding. The uh, grinding disc itself is wearing down a little bit, and that's to be expected. This is kind of a consumable item. Um, it looks like I could get there with a lot of time, but I may end up going and grabbing the big angle grinder and putting some interesting wheels on the end of that to see how much farther I can get. I'm only going to do half and half, uh, but we'll come back with some updates here shortly. Right now, I'm going to go get my fingers warm because it's getting cold out here.
So I made it back in out of the cold. My fingers and brain are both warmed up considerably, and I can tell you a few things that became obvious in the process of grinding. The first, I started, as you may have noticed, with a uh, battery-operated drill. And while that would work, it's going to take a whole lot of recharges. You're just not getting the power and the torque that you need. So I almost immediately switched over to an old-fashioned corded drill. You can get these for 15 bucks nowadays if you don't already have one laying in the closet. And I also realized that while this grinding wheel works, and it may very well work well enough enough for most, um, I think you could probably get some different wheels and get it down to an even smoother polish. Having said that, I don't know that you really need to, and I kind of wanted to stop here because I think this is as far as a lot of people are going to go. A $5 investment for a wheel, and I was out there grinding for between 35 and 40 minutes max, and that's of course just half of this. So you're looking for an hour and a half worth of investment of time. I just wanted to do the comparison. I'll go out and finish this one off sooner or later, <laughs> maybe when the blizzard stops. One of the first things I noticed when I got inside and got this on the stove was I have definitely made a difference. And you can tell by listening to the difference in the polished versus the unpolished side. This is just my leading edge spatula going along. I'm going to do this for you a couple times with the mic down there. I think what this tells us is that even if the non-stick properties of the two surfaces doesn't change that much, the cooking test will prove that one way or the other, we've improved the pan just in, for lack of a better term, a physical contact perspective. The physical contact as this spatula tries to go up underneath food is going to run into a lot fewer peaks and valleys, and those peaks and valleys are where food gets stuck and where the spatula can't help you get it off of the surface. So right there, I think that's an improvement. I just want to explain while this uh, griddle heats up that this was polished completely silver when I walked in the door. All I did was heat it up once uh, during the cleaning and put a little bit of peanut oil on it and it turned this uh, bronze color almost instantly. It doesn't take much to get that silver sheen off. I am a big fan of cast iron, as you could probably tell from looking at my stovetop and listening to my videos, but I am not obsessive compulsive about the seasoning on the surface of the cast iron. That's going to happen pretty much automatically if you just use your cast iron. If you cook in them, cook in them with oil and butter, it's going to happen. I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't cook something in one of my cast iron pans, and that seasoning has never been something I've had to pay any attention to. You don't need to do 10 cycles in your oven with Crisco and blah, blah, blah. You just need to use it. I suppose if you're, if you're going to hang it on the wall as art, then yeah, season the heck out of it. But otherwise, don't worry about it. Just cook in it. So if you remember from my earlier test, I did butter on one half and nothing on the other half of untreated cast iron. That's what we've got over here. But now I'm not using any butter or oil whatsoever. So we're going to see how the performance of the polished cast iron versus the unpolished cast iron holds up under pressure, shall we say. I'm going to use my little ring here just to keep it from going everywhere. In we go. We're on a medium, a little, a few ticks above medium on my stovetop at this point. I'm just gonna, now that it's set, I'm gonna pull my ring off. And as I said earlier, one of the things with cooking eggs on cast iron is just leave it alone for a while. I should get the salt and pepper though. Okay, that's 30 seconds. Let's see, over here on the side without any treatment or oil at all, this should stick a little bit like it did before, and yeah, it is, it's sticking a little bit. So let's clean my spatula. Let's try to go in on the polished side with no oil. And yeah, I'm getting less, I'm getting some, but I'm getting less than I am on the other side. Let's try to go see if I can get my hand over here to give you guys a real, I mean, if I scrape at it, I can get it to come up, but it's definitely sticking more than on the polish side. So that's kind of one point to the polish side. Let's try to go under the whole thing. See, there's still some there, but you know, this is kind of a, for the sake of science test, I can't think of a time that I don't put just a touch of oil or a touch of butter on my cast iron. 
Okay, so this is the real is it worth it test. We're going to cook like a normal human being with butter on the griddle. We're going to put the same ring down. I've cleaned the grill completely from the earlier test, by the way. So we got our butter on there. In goes the egg. We'll see what happens, but I'm still going to get the pepper. I do have a timer going. I'm giving these uh, 30 seconds per side. The polished side over here, no real sticking of any kind there, versus the unpolished side, also no real sticking of any kind there. Let's go underneath it. Interesting that we got a little bit more browning on the unpolished side, but really no sticking to speak of on either side when you use some oil or butter. A little bit on the little bit on the unpolished side. And I think that might be what I was talking about earlier, the physical edge of the spatula hitting those bumps. So maybe maybe half a point to the polished side here. Now, I don't want you guys to think I'm wasting these eggs because two chickens worked really hard for those. So let's do a little bit more butter and some leftover roast chicken. That will be an awesome chicken and egg sandwich. This was an interesting experiment. I'm glad I did it for myself firsthand so I could see and feel the results, but do you have to do this to your cast iron? Not at all. I think we proved that as long as you're cooking with butter and oil, your cast iron is going to perform perfectly fine, even straight out of the box with no alteration whatsoever. Do you get a little bit of an advantage from doing this? I think you do. I think it's all in that uh, way the spatula can glide across the surface a little bit smoother. I think polishing it down isn't a terrible thing. And for five bucks for a grinding head and an hour and a half of your time, probably worthwhile doing on a few of your pans, at least as a test, just so you can see for yourself how it works out. I'm going to do some more cooking experiments on this, of course. I'm going to do pancakes to bun kebabs, all kinds of sticky and non-sticky stuff, and steaming and butter and oil, and I just want to see how it performs over a range of things beyond fried eggs. And if that turns into something interesting, I'll sure let you guys know. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you, all the likes and thumbs up and subscriptions and views and comments and Tweety space shares and all that sort of stuff. It really does add up to allow me to keep doing this for you. If you have a few seconds in your very busy day to watch the random ad that runs after this, I greatly appreciate it because that does let me keep doing this for you penny by penny. So thank you so much for doing that if you have the time. Until next time, I am Mr. Spork. These are Mr. Spork's hands and now I gotta go find a place out in the snow to grind the rest of this thing down. Cheers! But stop howling. No, you can't eat that. Don't eat the microphone.